Tonight, on the line goes greyhound racing. While millions are being spent upgrading the sport's public image, on the line uncovers the often brutal reality behind an industry which destroys up to 30,000 dogs a year. It's a bloody industry. How many more thousands of greyhounds are going to be smashed up until the animal livers get in on this set? They'll start campaigning against it and greyhound racing could be banned. Greyhound racing is big business. 25% of all money waged in the UK goes on the dogs. That's a massive £2 billion every year. As well as gambling, a night at the dogs is now as much about whining, dining and corporate hospitality as it is about the racing. <laughs> Almost 200 miles away in Selby in Yorkshire, Karen Schultz looks after 80 abandoned greyhounds. Her priority is not return on financial investment, it's simply keeping her animals and the refuge alive. Karen's one of a growing number of people inside and outside the sport, concerned at the treatment of greyhounds before, during and after their racing careers. I would like more people to realise what happens to the dogs. You know, they all cheer and jeer them on, and then when they're not fast enough, they won't give them a second look. What happens to the ones that aren't fast enough? Well, they're either put to sleep, or they're lucky enough to have good owners, or they'll be, have a different fate. Yeah, well, obviously, every sport has pressure groups who, who, who worry about different aspects of, of the sport, whether it's rugby, cricket, football. Um, I mean, there are uh, people around who, who possibly are worried about the welfare of greyhounds. I, I'm found, in my opinion, you know. However, on the lines investigations into greyhound racing raise serious questions about the ethics of a sport generating billions of pounds that is based on the exploitation of animals. Those questions begin the moment these animals are born. Most greyhounds are bred in Ireland. Irish dogs make up 90% of runners on British tracks. 25,000 greyhounds are registered with the Irish Racing Authorities every year, and around 9,000 of those are exported to the UK. But wherever they're bred, not all greyhound puppies make it to the track. At an early age, culling of the litters starts, as Sally Main discovered when working for a top-flight Midlands trainer. Most of the litters are between six and ten. The most we ever had at where I worked was about eleven. What happens to the dogs that don't make the track? They tend to be put down anyway. They don't try and find homes for the youngsters, the ones that haven't served them. Estimates vary, but generally in Ireland, only two-thirds of puppies make the grade. Although 25,000 are registered every year, it's feared many thousands are put down before they're 12 months old. The reason is simple. The greyhound is a commercial animal. It costs around £2,000 a year to kennel and feed. If it's not fast enough, it costs only £20 to have it humanely destroyed. The majority of greyhound owners are in it for the money. And if a greyhound doesn't look like producing something that's going to be economically uh, uh, possible to, to show profit, then it's discarded. Ironically, the massive overbreeding that produces this large number of discarded dogs is being subsidised by the European community. One million pounds has been made available to support and encourage greyhound breeding in Ireland. For those greyhounds that do make the track, the serious business of training starts. They have to be schooled and taught to chase the mechanical hare.
David Hayward was a successful British trainer. He had more than 400 winners before his license was suspended in 1991. Basically, the dog has no life. He spends most of his time in the kennels, and then backs and forwards to the stadium. The dog consistently chases a false hare at the stadium, and they do tend to become bored with chasing that. It's widely known that if you give a dog a live animal to kill, on occasion I've heard of cats being used, this makes the dog more keener and makes it perform better. It's because they've had the taste of blood. These unique pictures were taken by an on-the-line hidden camera in Ireland. The use of live bait, in this case rabbits, is against the law in Ireland and the UK and is in fact an imprisonable offence. <whistles> Nevertheless, blooding is a common training technique and in rural areas in Ireland, the use of live lures is an open secret. For the greyhound, racing itself is frequently a painful and crippling business. Paddy Sweeney is one of the sport's most experienced and respected vets. On average, 10% of all runners on every track tonight are carrying injuries before they start. They've got an injured toe, torn muscle, a strained tendon, or perhaps an arthritic joint. 10% have an injury starting off. Well, the most common site of injury, of course, is in the foot, because the foot is the first point of contact with the ground. When a greyhound is running around uh, these uh, acute turns, that foot has got to be twisted, and you get this rotary force, and that's what causes the injury. How many greyhounds have been smashed up in the last 67 years? In all those years, 4,000 acute injuries, we'll say, three times that of non-acute or chronic injuries, so we put it down at, we'll say, 12,000 greyhounds a year. 12 times 67, you tell me how much that is. 12 times 67. You're talking close on a million dogs. I've been smashed injured. up, yes. We're seeing the equivalent of sort of 360,000 dog units, if you like, racing around each year. And there is actually quite a small rate of injury. So I don't think things can be, can be that bad, really. How many more thousands of greyhounds are going to be smashed up until the animal livers get in on this act? The League Against Cruel Sports. They haven't had a look at greyhound racing yet. What are they doing? They could spend a million pounds a year on a campaign against greyhound racing. And I would think that that will happen as sure as I'm... My name is Paddy Sweeney, and it might even happen in my lifetime.